Years later, it's a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on Spirited Away. It was released on July 20th, 2001. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa. What? <gasps> May. Thursday. What year? No. What? Year is it? Away. So I remember it is another one of those films that I remember seeing at school. I think the associate teacher or whatever during my art class in first period was like, hey, she wanted to show us a movie and it was called Spirited Away. And I remember watching like a good chunk of the movie. Remember is Chihiro or slash Sen. I'm just gonna call the girl Sen, which is more easier, but Chihiro or Sen when she like going down the stairs, that's when it stopped. That's when class was over. So I always wanted to go back and watch this movie. And luckily I'm glad I did because pretty good movie. Now, is it the greatest thing of all time? I don't really think so. The first and only Miyazaki film that I've ever seen. And it seems like this film is going in no certain direction, which isn't a bad thing, but it does seem like whenever Sen goes to this abandoned town or fair or whatever with their parents after they turn into goddamn pig, stuff just starts happening. You're shocked by everything, which is cool, but it's definitely like, I guess there is a narrative, her getting out of it, but it just seems like a bunch of random stuff coming at her, which should feel messy, but it's not at all, which is great on their part. We'll remember coming out of this movie is the piano. Piano key. Whenever they play it, that is the one thing I will forever remember about this movie because anything else, it's fine, it's good. This piano cue is just, I don't know, it's just perfect. So I'm gonna go through the characters. She meets Yubaba. She's like the leader of the whole entire thing where she thinks humans are trespassing her property. And it turns out there are two of them. Yubaba, she is a hard ass. She is the big boss. She has like a big old baby as a son. Like a really big, big baby. And I remember thinking, oh, this is cute, but also creepy as fuck. This is a big ass baby. But she has a big ass pimple in the middle of her forehead. But either way, she's not not really the antagonist she is kind of like a coach where she's like watching sen just do things and if she does the wrong or right thing she will intervene and talk to her essentially at least that's how i saw it but so throughout the film she's giving sen a hard time but then also congratulating her for letting no face in and all this stuff but by the end she does seem like evil and villainous even though she's not really she's just doing this because this is her territory this is her property and she's just a boss who wants to protect her territory and not want any other human being interfering with it and if they do they get turned into an animal and she does have a unique sort of design i guess every character in every animal or radish character they do look very specifically different at least most characters all the frog they look the same but then like every other animal or whatnot they look different appealing to me is just really appealing being like okay this looks different you look different haku i guess it's like the love interest in a way but then like he like knows her some more and we don't find out to the fact that he is just like a river that's why he has this connection and bond with sin seems weird at first but then as the story along and goes on it makes somewhat sense and then he like turns into some sort of dream dragon he like transformed he was i guess once human but because he came here accidentally just like her yubaba gives them a certain name takes away the real name gives them a nickname and then they will forget the real name forever and that's what exactly happened to haku he's the right hand man to yubaba doing all of her dirty work and i guess sid does have she has some sort of con again disconnection to haku the film i thought it was kind of romantic lovey dovey type stuff which is like okay that's fine but i guess by the end they do find some kind of way to be like oh yeah he was a river she fell into this river or she crossed this river okay Okay, you know don't really care about that show me the ways of how to get past it like that scene of her to hold her breath was good because it was intense if she does something wrong it's gonna go wrong and the only thing that goes wrong is that frog that jumps out and he like pushes it away and then that same frog is like he gets messed over over and over in this movie he just gets in wrong place wrong time for that little ass frog but haku is one of those characters that are helping sin get out of this other world that she's in and then no face is interesting when you first see no face it definitely intrigues you after he gets fed a lot and he gets through a lot of gold he wants to impress sin but then she doesn't want none of that and so he gets pissed off she needs to get him out of whatever building that they're in because it is destroying everything and yubaba doesn't like it whatsoever sin gets no face out of the building she gets it in with lynn and then they go to this train and then there's just these scenes of her and no face sitting next to each other full of like ghosts interesting scene this film just kind of lets it play out just kind of lets you look at things which is an interesting take and so just right before this he was chasing her wanting to like get revenge for her but right after they get to the train tracks and whatnot all of us forgiven which is kind of weird but but whatever this film is kind of just random random things happening but no face it is a character that intrigues you and you are along for most of the ride right it is an interesting aspect and then the boiler man room the nice old man at least that's how i saw this character he's just the old man doing work at the basement at the underground doing what he needs to do but is willing to help sin because the little girl with no idea what she's doing in this certain world he even gives her like a train ticket and then it's also here that she meets lynn lynn's also very helpful very nice both her boiler man room and haku are seemingly the only three person that wants to 
help. There's a, the other twin, but these four characters, they just want to help her because she doesn't belong here. There is that one scene though where we see his little helpers for the first time helping throwing these like rocks. One scene that definitely stuck out because I remember watching it be like, I don't know, I was just impressed by all the little things helping out. The ones that are pretending to get crushed and whatnot, not wanting to work. And then Sid having to work and guess work hard as well. And then the other twin, Zeniba? Zeniba? I think it's Zeniba. She's the nice one. She's the one that lives on her own, probably knitting blankets or whatnot. Also helps Sin. Haku stole like a necklace or bracelet from her, returns that to her, forgives Haku. But in the end, Jiro is a nice person that helps Sin. Chihiro herself, now here's the thing, I guess her art, if you want to call it, is I guess not learning how to be a shithead. At least that's what I've gathered because she has to learn how to work hard essentially. Lin even mentions the fact that have you never worked a day in your life? And then we see the fact that she's struggling. Granted, the tub that her and Lin has to clean is a very big like hot tub thing. But it seems like she's even struggling just got like, wiping like floors or whatnot. I guess our main character, our main protagonist, learning how to appreciate how to work hard, how to get things done, just listen. I guess it's like the moral of the story. Or maybe they just kind of let the, just kind of like, we'll let the audience figure it out. The whole point of this adventure, because her mom even mentions the fact that, oh, moving into this new town will be a new adventure. And then Chihiro does get into a new adventure. And throughout this adventure, she learns a lot of things. Learns how to work hard, work for herself. And I don't know, at least that's how I saw it. Maybe I'm just looking way into it. Maybe I'm just fucking out of my ass right now. Either way, that's how I saw it. So Spirited Away, 20 years later, still holds up it's still a good movie but i don't really think it's all that amazing to be quite honest it's a good film it does hold like a special place in my heart because it is the first miyazaki film that i've seen but is it amazing 20 years later i don't i don't know not me at least i don't think so so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching